Hola muchachos, ¿qué tal? Buenos días. Aquí tienen el horario para hoy, miércoles el 23 de enero. Uh, había tarea para hoy, la práctica con los números, hoja de ejercicios. This was the activity you guys did after the quiz. That was due last class. You guys were filling in the, the boxes with the numerical form of the numbers provided in Spanish. So for example, 6 would be 6, 15 would be the number 15, you're just writing 15 in its numerical form, 11 would be the number 11, and so on. On the right hand side you're doing numbers 0 through 999, writing the numerical form of the number for, provided in Spanish. So that was, that was what was due for today. What we're going to do today uh, is continue our focus on the preterite to talk about past actions and actually what you did to uh, finish your day last night. We're going to practice our recognition of the regular and irregular preterite tense verb uh, endings uh, and then also practice those preterite tense endings with music, uh, listening to a song today and testing your ability to recognize verbs, both regular and irregular in the preterite. Your warm-up question is, ¿Qué hiciste anoche después de acostarte? Or antes de acostarte. What did you do last night before? Antes de acostarte, before going to bed. I'll go over the project that you have due the beginning of April. We have two practice activities. Uh, a handout for in-class participation points, practicing the, the preterite tense, and then uh, again that fill-in-the-blank song activity. So for your warm-up again, indicate three things you did before going to bed last night. And use the preterite tense, the tense that we've been focused on here for the past few weeks. Uh, page 110 has all the endings of verbs in the preterite. You also have that handout that I gave you several weeks back, which also has the ending. So use this handout and or these endings, and then indicate three things that you did last night uh, before you went to bed. Similar to your warm-up from last week, you were talking about three things you did to start your day. So for example, por ejemplo, ¿qué hiciste? Anoche, antes de acostarte, acostarte, me lavé, me lavé la cara a las seis y media de la noche. I washed my face at 6.30. Yo cené, <laughs> just switching these around. From morning to night. Yo cené. Cenar is the verb to have dinner. Uh, a las siete de la noche. And yo fui a la casa de mi amigo para caminar juntos. A la escuela a las siete y cuarenta de la noche. Uh, we're going to switch this to gimnasio. Uh, maybe I work out before, right before going to bed. That is certainly not true. I wish it were. So you have three examples there. Notice the endings. And actually, ir is an irregular verb. We're going to look at that today on page 140. goes over the verb ir and ser, which are both irregular in the past. A lot of pink there. So ir is the verb to go. Ser is the verb to be. And when we express both of these verbs in the past, they're irregular. These are the conjugations of, of them. And they actually both share the same conjugations. So yo fui 
if you're using the verb ir, which again means the verb to go, yo fui would be I went, right? The verb to go in the past. Tu fuiste, you went. El ella fue, he or she went. We went would be fuimos, and then they went, or you plural went, fueron. Those same conjugations for the verb ser would translate differently, of course. Ser being the verb to be, uh, yo fui would be I was. You were, he or she was, we were, and they were. So it's very strange how you have two verbs that mean different things. However, they share the same conjugations in the past. And the natural question is, well, how do I know it's the verb ir or the verb ser? Well, you'll know based on context, right? Locations are mainly used with the verb ir, and then adjectives mainly used with the verb ser. So you'll need to take what's on page 140 and switch it over here to your cheat sheet. You already have the regular endings of ar, er, and ir verbs. We're going to skip the regular verbs here. That's actually on page 142. We'll look at later this chapter. The verbs ir and ser, go ahead and fill in there. Excuse me. Fui, fuiste, fue, fuimos, fueron. Exactly as it appears on page 140. So you'll need those to do the next thing that's on our agenda. Talk about the project in just a moment. Uh, let's see. Guided practice. Comp oh, no, no, no. Let's just go ahead and skip ahead to the to the song activity. So there's a link here to the song Toro Cambio by Camila. You guys are going to listen to this song and then this handout gives you the missing lyrics. And so you'll listen to the song and you know what these verbs should look like in the preterite. So you can kind of anticipate, especially if you look at the lyrics themselves, the whole lyrics, and try to figure out what the missing lyrics are. And they're all verbs in the preterite. Most of them are irregular, except for a few, excuse me, most of them are regular, except for a few uh, irregular verbs. So there you have the verb ser and ir shows up several times throughout the lyrics. And then you guys are going to fill it in all the way to 17, and there you have the link to the song for those of you that are doing it at home. You can just copy that straight from the document that's in Canvas. All right, let's talk about the project, and then the last thing that we have for today. Project is out of 40 points. Uh, it is due for eight days on April 4th and April 5th. And essentially what you're doing for this project is doing just like how you did for your daily routine project. You're going to chronicle 20 things that you did over the course of a week, or it could be a day, or it could be a weekend, or it could be spring break, because this will be due when you come back from spring break, any amount of time that you choose. Um, I'm actually going to change this. You do not need to include the time in your responses. Uh, I just want the 20 activities. Okay, so you do not need to include the time in your in your responses. You do, however, in your 20 conjugations, you do have to include in your 20 conjugations at least one example of the different points of view. So although the majority of your conjugations are probably going to be in the yo form, talking about you, right, and what you did over the course of a week or what have you, even though the majority will be in the yo form, I do need to see at least one example in the tu form, in the el, ella, usted form, in the nosotros form, and in the ellos, ellas, ustedes form. Talking about other people, you and other people. Now the natural question is, what do I do for the tu form? Uh, you can make it a, a title, right? Like, que hiciste which means, what did you do? Que hiciste, 
el fin de semana pasado. What did you do last weekend? ¿A dónde fuiste el fin de semana pasado? Where did you go last weekend? Uh, ¿Qué hiciste durante las vacaciones de primavera? What did you do during the spring break? So that can be your title slide, which can count as one of your 20, and that would suffice as your example in the two form. Um, or you can put it at the very end of your presentation. It's up to you. So that's option one. Uh, whether it be a storyboard or a poster, there needs to be a narrative element. So you can't just submit a PowerPoint and be done. Um, you can't just submit a poster and be done. You need to record an oral component to this project. So it could be you doing a voiceover or you actually presenting in a video your slides or your poster or whatever uh, format you would like to choose. Option two, same thing, it's just your ideal weekend. So time and space and money are, are of no object. You can come up with anything you want. It doesn't need to be real, if you will, or 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 truthful. Uh, some other options here for those of you that are into more of the fashion component that we looked at in Chapter 2, the items of clothing. Uh, you can research from 20 different Spanish-speaking countries uh, clothing that is fashionable in those countries. And for each article of clothing that you find, uh, answer these four questions. ¿Qué es? What is the item of clothing? ¿De qué es? What is it made of? ¿De qué color es? What are the colors? And then, ¿dónde se puede buscar y encontrar esa ropa? Where can you find, look for and find that clothing? So we're looking for a location. Name of the clothing, where, uh, where it's from, or excuse me, what it's made of the colors, and where you can find that item of clothing, and that can be in just bullet point format, doesn't need to be in complete sentences. Same thing for the fashion show for the U.S. fashion. Again, 20 items of clothing throughout the decades or different parts of the country, United States, answering the same questions as option three. And then option five is an interview activity where you're asking people 20 different classmates inside or outside of class, uh, what they did last weekend, and one article of clothing that's in fashion. And then if you're not keen on any of the project ideas, you can come up with your own test. Uh, it must share with me this idea one week prior to the due date, so this would probably need to be, I'm not going to be checking my email for spring break, obviously, because it's spring break. So you may want to do this well before one week. Uh, maybe one week before spring break would be even better. Ten multiple choice questions, ten fill in the blank questions, ten short answer questions, ten matching questions, and ten extended response questions. You create the test. You take your own test, providing the correct answers, and I'll grade your test based on uh, your creation of those five sections. Uh, the guided practice. Forgive me, the other thing that we didn't talk about, uh, you can take a look here as to how to do that. The instructions are in the agenda. It says use your notes to fill in the blank section titled El Preterito. So on one side, it's pretty straightforward. You have the infinitives, all AR verbs, on the left side there. And then in the vertical columns, you have what the verb means in English and then how each of these verbs should be conjugated in the yo form, tu form, el, ella, usted form, nosotros form, and ellos, ellas, ustedes form. So you're going to fill in all the information for hablar, mirar, estudiar, etc. And then on this side, you guys are filling in with the different parts to a verb and the process of conjugating verbs in the prototype that we looked at. Uh, last week. For this bottom chart, uh, it says choose five regular verbs and one irregular verb, a cargarzar verb, and then conjugate them in the different forms in Spanish. So, for example, 
dibujar. I don't think that's an AR verb from over here. No. Dibujar. You're going to write here. It's the verb to draw. So you're basically going to follow this model, right? Dibujar means to draw. And then you're going to conjugate it in the five forms. Dibujé. Dibujaste. Dibujó. Dibujamos. And dibujaron. So, five regular AR verbs. Actually, they don't need to be only AR verbs. It can be, actually, I'd like to get two AR, two ER, and two IR uh, just to get a little bit of variety. But one of the two AR verbs should be a Cargars R verb. And then just follow that model in terms of how to fill in each of these vertical columns. 2AR, 2ER, and 2IR verbs. Sorry for the long video, y'all. Uh, that is your agenda for today, miércoles, el 23 de febrero. And your only homework for next class is just choose whatever the options that most appeal to you for the project. And kind of have that in mind and hopefully kind of chip away at it well before the due date. Adios, muchachos. Nos vemos en clase. Chao.